I guess. Yeah. Is, was this an adjourn? This or a call? call. There's a call made. Okay. All right. So we're moving. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Keith, thank you for coming back and joining us tonight. Bart, I'll let you start. I guess the first thing is we're going to start talking about the ARPA funding and kind of talk with Brian on, you know, we, we met last week, Brian, kind of whatever, what we thought from the list of stuff you've given us and come up with some of our priorities and so I guess we kind of just start from there. Sure, and I'll, you know, begin by commenting, I shared the priorities that council had identified with Brian by, by email. We've had some discussions a little bit back and forth. There, there's some clarifying information that we all need to work through tonight. Um, and frankly, the people who know the most about that are not named Bart Warner, so I'm probably going to, at this point, invite Brian to come up and maybe speak to um, where we are currently on the items that Council had identified back on September 21st and, and perhaps the insight that we have been bouncing back and forth as to how practical those might be. Um, the other expert in the room is Bob Flynn. He's our chairman. Uh, Bob knows the details of the capital improvement plan as well as uh, we've had a lot of discussions about the ARPA uh, funding. Um, so Bob's also an expert at those, those issues. If you've got any questions that I can't answer, he probably can. Um, the, uh, the ARPA funds, of course, have some requirements that go with them, like the project had to have been planned, and I think we talked about this a little bit earlier. It had to have started the planning process prior to March of this year. And so what, what Bart and I were talking about is one of the projects that um, would likely be on that list would be Belltown Road, the water line along Belltown Road. Um, that project, while it wasn't on the Bedford Regional Water Authority's capital list, and we haven't done any planning on it, the city of Bedford did. Ergo, the town of Bedford did, the predecessor did. And so that project would very likely fit into the ARPA uh, funds. But that would be one that the town would, I guess, account for. They would say that it meets the town's planning requirement part of ARPA rather than it being part of the BRWA. Yeah. I think it's fair to say we would bear the accounting risk such that it is to make sure that it's. Compliant. Well, and frankly, all of the, if the county did provide funds or if the town provides funds to the authority, we have to provide you the details, but I think ultimately the locality has to report back to the feds to say that it meets the requirements anyway. So you're in a much better position to do that for projects like Belltown Road than we are because it preceded the formation of the BRWA. And I think it was back in 2000. 11, maybe? Sounds 2012, when, when the first piece of the waterline, I'd call it phase one, was built up to Draper Road and then down Draper Road, the balance of that certainly identified and is something that would likely fit into it. Can I ask a question? Would we contract that or would we Oh, we'd still handle all of the work. It's just the reporting back to the feds would have to be okay. from the town. And, and all the projects, even the ones that are on CIP, if the, the board was. Uh, so interested in funding the ones that are on the Bedford Regional Water Authority CIPs, that reporting still comes back to the town. Okay. It's the locality that has to report to the feds. And then we just have to provide whatever information you need in order to make your report to the feds. So, we can cover um, that way. so the other list of projects that, uh, that Bart shared with me, they're all great projects. I just don't know that they're, they're going to meet that requirement of the planning prior to March. Uh, like the trunk line sewer system that go, that provides the service up to Nichols Road Pump Station, which we call Pump Station 1. That's a large portion of the town. There are considerable restrictions on that pipe. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to it. We recognize that it's urgent, important, a high priority, but it doesn't fit the requirement for ARPA because it hasn't been studied, evaluated. There's no PER on it, to our knowledge. There's no um, CIP identifying those pieces of pipe to be uh, replaced and therefore I don't think 
from the BRWA standpoint at least, they wouldn't meet the DARPA requirements. Great project, definitely needed. Would help with the capacity issues in multiple areas around town. Can I have to question? Probably not ARPA. Yes, sir. But Please. you have it in here. Well, we have it identified as a long-term project. Uh, the, the booster station itself, replacing some pumps, is included. The line work that goes all the way up to Governor's Hill mm -hmm. is not included. The piping, which is what the major restriction is, is not included. The reason the pumps are is because it was a small enough project that we could likely fight that off and chew it with our annual capital uh, process, our annual program, which, as I indicated last time, is in the ballpark of about a million dollars a year that we have for the entire system, not just town, but county as well. So when you're adding $45,000 pumps or $50,000 pumps, we're even going to phase those over multiple years. There's three pumps in the station, and each year for three years, we were going to put in a roughly $50,000 pump. We couldn't even do 150 at one time. So the piping, it, you know, I would just really grab some numbers, but your multi-million dollar project to get the piping all expanded and um, able to take all of the flow necessary in the entire zoning area. So it, it's a very big project and it's one that we're just starting to analyze now. We're just starting to do some of the field work in-house, but it, it doesn't meet that planning aspect. And since it doesn't, neither does several of the other projects that were listed that are kind of in that same See, we were, kind of, I, I, I'll tell you where we were coming from because we were looking at that spreadsheet. So mm -hmm. that's probably where we thought, okay, it, because it made it on that kind of spreadsheet that we thought that was far mm -hmm. enough along. Okay. And that's why we were picking to get as many things right. on that spreadsheet. Yep. We didn't even really go into the capital plan much. Mm -hmm. We, we, we concentrated on that, that, okay. that sewer line spreadsheet you'd given us. And yep. so that's, that's where, I mean, that's just probably some. Sure miscommunication between us and that's okay but. well so that spreadsheet is kind of a wish list a known uh, it's more like a list of who's who in problem areas in the town and it's generated primarily from our GIS every time we do a repair we put a spot on the GIS that shows it's a, like a heat tracing map when you take enough of the little spots the areas start to grow and it becomes a very large zone that says we've got a problem here it needs to be uh, addressed. That's how we add projects to that list, that spreadsheet list, and then we slowly work through our replacement funds in order to um, chip away at those problems. So would it be fair to say, I've got this other spreadsheet, this American Rescue Plan Act. Those are the ones that are applicable, that's correct. So those projects that are listed there, sewer line replacement projects in town, those are ones we can pick and choose from. Yes, correct. And are some of those water line projects, or that the, it's all sewer line, correct? It's sewer. That's where the greatest need is. Okay. Uh, the, the water lines will continue to chip away at using our replacement funds annually a little bit at a time. Those are less expensive. They're easier to do a little bit at a time. With sewer, you, you really have to look at holistically the system. If you don't, you'll end up putting in a 10-inch line that connects to an 8-inch line that connects to a 6-inch line, and it just doesn't work from a, a capacity of flow standpoint. It doesn't go from a big pipe to a smaller to a smaller. With a water system, you can start with the correct size pipe, like, for example, Avenel. There were 2- and 3-inch pipes along Avenel, and they were causing problems for the customers, and they're certainly causing problems for fire suppression. Hydrants being served by 3-inch is absolutely not uh, in compliance with VDH's requirement of a six inch pipe. So we could go in on Avenel alone and make a replacement there and have that capacity um, issue repaired or fixed. With sewer, if we had oversized that pipe to take care of long term needs, then it would flow into a smaller pipe and it would cause overflows. So distribution of water, it's possible to do that collection with sewer, it's much more difficult. You have to look at it holistically, and that's what we know needs to be done for all of that pump station one drainage area. 
but it hasn't been done yet. It hasn't been evaluated. We really need to have a preliminary engineering report prepared. And we started the field work investigations to prepare that report, but we don't have those results back yet. <laughs> I agree. Back to the <laughs> well, I mean, are, are we hold on? Are we back to square one? Because we made a list. Are we saying we cannot do that? Now? Well, some of the ones on the list absolutely do fit the ARPA requirements. So um, the tank that is at Helm Street, that's definitely on the list, and it's something that um, hasn't been funded. That's as I mentioned last time, it, it's probably in the ballpark of about two million dollars. The booster station in town is extremely important. That's the authority's number one priority, and that's approximately $2 million. Um, actually, that one's much closer to a fixed $2 million fee. Um, the tank is still a little bit rough estimate because everything in steel is going up right now, the cost of all materials, and we haven't bid that project. Um, so we don't know the exact cost. But roughly, I would say the booster station at about $2 million, the tank at about $2 million. Um, Town and country sewer system taking care of all of those problems instead of one little piece at a time like we would from replacement. That's somewhere in the $1.8 to $2 million. And then I don't even know the cost for um, for Belltown Road. Uh, again, just grabbing numbers out of the air, two to $300,000 maybe. Might be less, but that's without having performed any detailed evaluations. So, that's six point three, six point four million dollars, and that's about all the funds I think that the town is receiving for our It's in the ballpark anyway. So we can certainly talk about any specific project that would meet that planning requirement by March of this year. Anything else that, that you would like to have as a really high priority like Belltown that might have some advanced planning to it, we're completely open to any other ideas. I just don't think that we can do projects that haven't had that prior plan. Can, can other projects that we were picking on, can they not be put up higher on the list if we do the other? We can. We can start chipping away at them. Again, the problem is like that service area, if we were to look at all of Pump Station 1 service area, it's a multi-million dollar project, probably in the three to four million dollar range. So we could start some of the preliminary engineering report, for example. That's probably a seventy-five to eighty thousand dollar report, and we could pull that out of our capital plan, the authority's capital plan, because we're getting assistance with projects like the booster station. So we can add some projects through the savings that we're getting from the potential ARPA funds, they just don't actually meet the ARPA requirements themselves. So preparing an engineering report now is a great idea, and it's one that I think the authority would definitely embrace. It's just we wouldn't turn that back into ARPA and ask for that to meet those qualifications, because it just doesn't. So look, may, may we concentrate right here a little bit on this sewer line replacement project? I mean, I think, yeah, well, I mean, they, they got to be done. So, um, tell me if I'm speaking. Basically, our consensus. Well, I just wanted to, I'm sure Brian's talked with Sam Darby about this a fair amount, but the way that the process worked, it's mapped onto the, um, the VRA water facilities and water supply revolving fund process where there's a process where first you can get a grant from DEQ or VDH in order to do planning work, or excuse me, in order to do basic work. You need to have an idea that's out there in order to qualify for that grant. Then you can have the grant opportunity and then you can issue a bond through the Virginia Resources Authority and or get grants from VDH or DEQ from a federal program. Now the way that the Treasury rule, the way that the ARPA rule works is if you fall into that process where you'd be able to get the grants to do the plant to do the um, actual design work <coughs> under VRA and DEQ and VDH's rules, you're good enough. And we're you, you need to have some type of a planning document that says that you're doing it. And it doesn't necessarily need to be quite so. I don't think it needs to be quite so specific as to say we're going to replace this road. 
but you do need to be able to point to something, say, in your comprehensive plan or your strategic plan that says, at the very barest minimum, uh, you know, do replacements of non-revenue producing superannuated pipes. Like, you've got to have something that you can put your finger on and say that's what's going to get us into that planning grant territory that DEQ and VDH would approve. And they tend to be pretty flexible with that. So, again, it, it all maps directly onto that, but I just wanted to make sure you, you understood how that whole process, to the extent that you wanted to know, it was, it was set up. It's actually pretty well defined because that VRA, Virginia Resources Authority, which is a bond which, who purchases bonds from localities, and then you guys know VDH and DEQ. Um, those processes are really well defined. I mean, how many bajillions of dollars do you have in bonds to VRA right now? <laughs> we have in the ballpark of 45 million. Oh, I figured it would be more than that, but yeah. <laughs> Not quite the bajillion range, but it's, bajillion. <laughs> it, it's a lot. Um, so basically, I, yeah. I completely, if it meets VRA's requirements through getting bonds issued, then it will meet the ARPA requirements. There, there are a few items to purchase, like we've got a vacuum truck that's a $500,000 truck. That won't meet it because it's got a shorter life. It's a 10-year uh, replacement life on that, so um, depreciation rate. So it would definitely not fit VRA because you're getting a 20 year, 25 or 30 year loan and you're buying a 10 year piece of equipment. So that type of thing won't fit. But Belltown Road very easily would. Or I, I don't expect you to have the comp plan memorized, but do we have is it in there? I don't think so. I don't think we addressed infrastructure issues as a result of reversion. We just kind of focused on right. yeah, things that were directly related to the town. Have you all done any of what he's talking about on these type of projects? What we have, and that's what's in our CIP. That's what our plan, the adopted plan that um, I provided last time, that's what that document is. Okay. Is getting us the preparation so that we would be eligible for bond funding through VRA or through. Uh, so you met the requirements that Mike talked about. Yes, anything that's in that list that, that's on there is going to be eligible for the VRA because it's been identified. We've done quite a bit of evaluations and studies to get to that stage. If it's not on that list, it's probably not going to meet our needs for ARPA, but Belltown Road would from the city now town's needs. Yeah, those are the, the things that are on that list are not just wall scrapers that just barely get over the fence. They're in the second deck. Right. It's just when we're talking to like Belltown Road, we're talking about the stuff that's only five feet further than the fence. Still a home run, but it's more of a squeaker. So going back to the rescue plan, this, that's what he's talking about. Those are all home runs. Those right. are in the, okay, yeah, those so are in the Yep. So I mean, pretty much consensus last time was certainly Helm Street and certainly Town and country. I mean, am I, are we still let this? I mean, yes, yes, they were. Yeah. They were our top two, and and you know we'll talk about the, you know the booster project. We we talked about it. But we just felt uh, as the town funded all of that, you know, sure. with the county not maybe participating, we just didn't think that was maybe the right thing for us to do. That's not saying down the road we might not take a look at that, but I mean I think for us to use two million dollars of our ARPA funds for something that's substantially going to affect large areas of the county. Sure. And then and if they're not participating, right. I mean I think that's a hard ask. Well, and our hope is still that the county will have some money that they're not allocated towards the broadband and that it might actually, um, that they participate as well. But of course, we won't know that until late October, maybe right. even in November. What size tank, I mean, I've been up there, y'all got it fenced off, it's been years since I saw. The big tank, what was the capacity of that? You've got a million gallon tank up there, right? Correct. The square tank is a million gallons, the round tank is a million and a half. And the million and a half is the one that has failed and needs to be replaced. The million tank we've already rehabbed um, about two years ago, and it's in great shape. All right, so if we were to place the Helm Street, I'm going to play devil's advocate, and it's a million and a half gallons, 
We've got a million gallon tank there because fire suppression is a big thing. And we talked about the pressure, but you put a pressure reducer on a million and a half, I imagine, don't you? So you don't get all that on the water lines. Well, the elevation is the same. It floats between the two. So both tanks do have a um, actuator valve that keeps the tanks from overflowing. They open, they, they operate in a regularly open position because they're sized and, and situated to take the flow from the Turkey Mountain plant and flow by gravity to fill them up. So those altitude valves don't have to operate very often. Okay. So we would have two and a half million gallons of water up on that hill, not counting what's coming through the lines. How would the boost affect us if we've got that much water on that mountain? Well, so what the booster station does is it allows you to bring water from um, Lynchburg forest system into town in case there's not a connection to the line that's going south on 122, like happened when the slope failed and the water line was out of service for six months. We couldn't bring any water into town except for <coughs> by pumping. We put temporary pumps on the ground with a generator above ground. It's a very loud process and it's a very temporary process that are subject to weather and everything else. That's how we were able to continue to feed the town with water at night without having to run the Turkey Mountain plant around the clock, which there's no harm in running the plant except it's very expensive. Uh, process when you're paying um, for the the graveyard and the uh, the night shift and the cost of water is already the most expensive of all of the system. It just becomes cost prohibitive to run that plant around the clock, and that's why it's a lot less money to bring the water from the Lynchburg area from the forest uh, into the town. So it's redundancy primarily. It offers us flexibility from an operation standpoint, but if there were a drought condition and there wasn't water available at the reservoir, then and we didn't have that feed again from Smith Mountain Lake capable, then it lets us bring water in from the forest. The other way around, it also allows us to take the water down to the lakes area from the town, so we could take it from the town treatment plant, or we could take it from the a forest area and set it down there. Also redundancy, so that's more of a county benefit. It's the lakes area that benefits from that. The forest area also, right now we can send about two million gallons to forest by gravity from the lake. If we had that booster station, we could increase that flow rate and go up to uh, four and a half to five million gallons a day. Again, that benefits the forest area. Um, the primary benefit for the town is being able to bring it from the lake if we're flowing the forest at a high rate or from forest if we don't have the capability or capacity from the lake. So both localities benefit. Um, there are two service areas that benefit more from that station. For the benefit from the station, we, all three benefit, but one's the town and the other two are lakes and forest. Well, but we should always have water if we was to put this other tank up here. Well, if the source is gone, no. So if, if you had a drought and um, let's say Smith Mountain Lake was also restricted. The, if the reservoir has water in town, we can use every drop of it out <laughs> to provide water for the system. But it's a fairly small reservoir, so it's more uh, subject to drought conditions. Smith Mountain Lake, on the other hand, has a requirement in that withdrawal permit that if there are drought conditions, we have to restrict the amount of water that we can take out of the lake. Even though there's a bajillion gallons of water in the lake, we still can't take it all out. We have restrictions there. So in a drought condition, that booster station would be extremely important for the town. Um, if we start entertaining the booster station, I mean, is, does the Water Authority have any capital that they could put in towards that project? We do, and I can't speak for the board, but I think they would definitely be willing to share the cost of that project. That's one that Again, because it's near the top of our list, it's a very high, high priority because it <clears throat> provides the redundancy, because it provides the flexibility um, from a staffing standpoint on our treatment plants. It has a lot of benefit for the entire community. And so I think that, that the authority would very much be interested in partnering with the town 
And again, if we were so fortunate as to have some assistance from the county in the future, then that would free up those funds that were allocated to do other things, to do other town projects, to do other authority projects. So our hope is still that the county will contribute. They just have to work through the broadband issues before they're able to commit to that. And I know we're getting it. I worked in Lynchburg 13 years, and I know what that James River was like. And that's what we end up with. And that's why I just... Well, 90% of the time they use the peddler. There, there is, you know, periods where they use the James, and it is a harder water. It's a river water instead of a lake water. But the peddler reservoir is very, very close to matching what the town's reservoir is. So in a drought condition, it's likely the James would be used. In a drought condition, it's likely that the water that would come into town through that booster station would be from the James. But in the other times of the year where it could be used, it would likely be the peddler. And this is totally anecdotal, but since we fixed that dam with the help of Lacey and all that on the reservoir, I don't know that we've had a problem, of course, now that we have you all, with the drought problem. I mean, I was up there when Storm Creek was dry, but um, that's not the... We've been very fortunate. We, we didn't add any capacity as part of that project. We did? We did not. Okay. Well, what happened is we're taking a lot more water from Smith Mountain Lake now to yeah. subsidize for the town, which is what we're doing is we're watching the level of the reservoir, and as it stops flowing in, instead of watching it continue to drop, we hold it at a constant level or, you know, again, maybe watch it drop a little and then bring it in from the lake instead of having it go away. So that, that's the flexibility. Okay. So, a couple of things. Obviously, you've probably heard about what happened in Flint, Michigan a few years ago with the lead pipes. One, do we have lead pipes? And two, what precautions are you taking to make sure that we never become another Flint? Well, so there, there were a few things that happened in Flint that um, are not applicable to, to our jurisdiction, thankfully. Um, first of all, we have a uh, top-notch regulatory agency, the Virginia Department of Health, that, that oversees all of the operation of all the water treatment plants uh, in Virginia, and they are on their game. They um, have very stringent requirements. They have a very thorough review. We just went through an annual review at the Smith Mountain Lake plant and came back with a very clean bill of health, and they very complimentary of the way that that operation is working. Um, secondly, the the type of water that we have in Virginia we're very fortunate that we have a lot of uh, we're a water rich area and the type of water here is not as corrosive as what they were dealing with in Flint which is what causes the lead to come up out of the pipes and cause that contamination so um, and we've got the type of treatment here with um, neutralizers the, the chemicals that we're adding at our plants that keep it from being corrosive so that we don't have the problem with the lead poison like uh, they had flint. Those things use lead pipes, most of ours are galvanized, aren't they? Well, a, a very large portion of the distribution system is actually cast iron or ductile iron. Um, the majority of the lead pipes are actually in the service lines that are connected from the mains to go to the houses. But a lot of the, the old lead pipes, um, you know, date back to the 20s and 30s and we don't have a whole lot of homes in the area that are that would have used the lead pipes and I think a lot of those did use galvanized at the time I don't know why some areas are more susceptible to using lead than, than uh, iron but we have to do tests on a regular basis for lead and copper and our tests every year that we have to uh, <coughs> produce our our report our consumer confidence report we have a clean bill of health on lead and copper. So we're very, that also caught us by uh, surprise when we were reading about that uh, that happened in Flint. We did a, a check on our system and said that we really don't fit in that same category. Great okay. question. So Brian, I, I keep asking questions, but anyway, the soil line replacement project, you've got 6.5 million. Yes. All those meet what Mike's talking about. No. The, that, that's, that's the list of all of the projects that we know in town that need to be done but haven't been evaluated. Those are just a, that's a wish list. Okay, okay, so, well, obviously, town and country is not in there. Six C's, Morgan Street, Burke's Hill, 
Poplar, have any of those? Those are all replacement projects and they don't meet that criteria, unfortunately. I have a question. Yes, sir. When you ran the line from a uh, lake, and I don't know because I haven't been out yet, on the Busa station, was there any upgrades done to the Busa station when the lines was ran from the lake to the Busa station to Forest? Well, there was no station. Yeah, so we actually, when we built that project, we brought the pipes up knowing that we were eventually going to build the station. Yeah, I saw that. You can see it from the road. Right? right. We built all that as part of that project. There was no station there before. We acquired the land during the design build process for the lake. We knew that we needed one there. We just didn't have the funds at the time to do it. And we thought we might need that in five or ten years. Little did we know that three years after we built the project, a mudslide would take out our pipe and take us six months to replace along the edge of 122. That brought it very much to the forefront that that pipe's critical, but so is having a booster station that gives us the flexible options. So it moved that project up in priority pretty quickly when we realized we were uh, crippled, I'd say, to have the flexibility that we had grown to, uh, to be accustomed to. Thank you. Did you get our list? Yeah. Yes. Got it. Okay. Of that list, which ones don't meet the criteria? I'm still a little confused. All of them. Except I thought Town and Country did. Town and Country does the, Town and Country alone does the entire list of that six and a half million does not. But Town and Country does because that's already on, it, it's in our CIP. It's specifically okay. spelled out. There's. The Town and Country and Helm Street do. That's correct. And nothing else does? We think Belltown might. Belltown probably. And I will state publicly, if it does not, the town has other resources. It can commit to that. So ideally, we use ARPA, but if, if through an auditing process we find that it does not comply, we can still proceed with that, and it is in the town's interest to do that. So I'm, I'm probably confusing the issue, but I think the council's wishes for Belltown to proceed regardless at the same time as these other parts. So right now it looks like where we're at, we're at 4.3 million. The Elm Street, Town and Country, and Belt. So, and we've got 6.8. So, two and a half left. So, I'm gonna throw an idea out. Um, we put 500,000 towards the booster station. You and the county come up with the rest. You can make that happen <coughs> wicked. That, that's just a proposal. You know. What are we looking at on the total on that? Another million. $2 million. Dollars. And, you know, and if you get more information, from, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we, we got to, I mean, that's just a proposal that I'm throwing out to you guys as well as you. But the coffee out would be if we get that five hundred thousand, we will make a deal. <laughs> we get that five hundred thousand back to address some of these other sewer problems out of your capital. Does that make sense? Because otherwise, you just going to spend it. <laughs> um. Well, again, that's not a decision that I can make. That's a board decision, uh, but. Um, I think we're no, trying to set a neutral position as yeah. far as that goes. I mean, I think what we're trying to do is at least give you some commitment on a big chunk tonight. Sure. You know? And then. Yeah, I'm news to me. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but, but doable. <laughs> so, what, what are our totals here? We're, we're looking at town and country at what, around 2 million? 2 million. Okay. Then Belltown, roughly 300,000. That, that is a very, okay, that's, that's yeah, a that's very a, rough guess. Okay, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, right. Okay, and then Helm Street, what are we? Two, is that two, two point five. Well, he said he said that's that he made a twenty percent increase in steam. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not sure about that. Correct. We okay, think that's yeah, about two. Like everything. So we're at four point five. Four point five. Out of six point eight. And if we do five hundred towards the booster station, we're at five million. 
Now, I don't know if there's other other uses that we can find. Or if you or if we can identify any other projects on that list. That well, so if you were to fund more towards the booster station, then that frees up the money from our capital process, and we could then allocate some of those funds towards the other wish list projects. Um, again, I, I, I can't commit any of that. That all has to go to the board. Right. Um, but that, I think, would be a reasonable assumption that we might be able to, uh, to work with. Nothing else, yeah. just get the study for pump one and two, just to get, I mean, and sure. all those pumps, would, would they qualify that you're talking about at $50,000 a piece? They do, yes, they do. They're, they're large purchases with long-term life, yes. So, you buy two pump. pumps for 100000 Well, each of the stations, there are three primary stations in town, uh, one, two, and three have all been identified for having those replacements. We just did pump station six, which is the one that serves Peaks of Otter. It only had two pumps, so it was an easier re replacement. We did both of them already. All three of those stations need all three of the pumps replaced. Mm -hmm. So that that does meet the needs for the service area, and it does help with the capacity in the future. It's just not the pipe, which is what was requested through the right. through well, the email. Then we're looking at the pipe sooner rather than later. Let me sure. ask a procedural question. I know, Bart, you were telling me we've got to report to the government, federal government what, by the end of October what we're going to spend our ARPA funds on. Right. Is that just for the first $3.4 we got, or is that for the full $6.8 It's my understanding it's the first half. Yeah. It's an, it's an initial. So it's we're, we're kind of committed to more than what we got to tell them. I think we can identify projects and issue that progress report that we've identified these, and we can even note the total cost in anticipation okay. of the next installment. But mainly for our purposes, we just like to get started as soon as possible so we can get them done. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, our, our biggest challenge is that, and I indicated this last time, the ARPA projects across the state are starting to soak up those resources, uh, including pipe. We placed an order for another road like um, Avenel, I think it was Laurel Street, maybe. Um, we placed the order and they said, all right, we'll have that delivered in May of 2022. We said, no, we, we want to start that project in a month. And they said, we'll have that pipe May of 2022. If, if that continues to where the delay on the pipes are going to take place, the prices are going to go up because just normal supply and demand. So with what, what we've discussed so far, it sounds like we have enough committed with what we just addressed between Elm Street, Town and Country, and Built and Road. Built and Road. Okay. We're okay. We've yeah. met the half. So we're good. Oh, yeah, I think so. Okay, so and we need to commit on the... the and we can continue, continue to work on the pump station. And, and, I, and yeah, I, mean, I think we'll know more about that in a couple of months. In a couple of months, we'll know more on the business station. That's right. We can revisit that at that point. Right. If we commit to the the two, the four point, the three projects. Right. Uh, Elm Street, uh, Elm Country, Elm Country, and Delta. 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 So yeah, I think we can do that tonight. I, I mean, yeah. so you can add that as an agenda item. Agenda item tonight. Sure. Could they do that this meeting? And then we'll continue our discussion on the station. Any assistance greatly appreciated, and it will help the community as a whole in the question. Okay, a couple of things. One, how much money and capital improvements funds does the Bedford Regional Water Authority have to help us help match some of what we want to do? And another thing is, if you live in town on your water bill, you're going to obviously see your water base and sewer volume. Then you've got another one that says water volume and sewer volume town. Now does the county also pay, have a line for just county as well, or are we being double dipped? A great question. Um, the, the rates right now have three different categories in them. There's an in-town rate, there's an adjacent to town rate, and there's a county rate. That's because when we consolidated and formed the authority, the rates for those three areas were fairly different. And we were going through the process of a consolidation of those rates and equalization of those rates. And we're in year eight of 10 right now. 
So in a couple more years, everyone will be at this, the same rate. The county doesn't pay a portion of the town's rate. The town doesn't pay a portion of the county's rate. It's just that there are three different rate structures depending on where you physically are connected. If, if we're going to get you four million down, further down the road, can you slow down the rate increases a little bit for us? <laughs> but, you know, you, you say that a little tongue in cheek, but that is exactly what the county did uh, when we had a sewer project. They paid down, they paid a million and a half towards the forest sewer project, and by doing that, we were able to slow down our capital recovery fee from I think we were projected at 6,800, and we stopped it at 5,900. So they basically did buy down the rate increase because they wanted to provide that benefit for the their customers. The, all the customers, really, even town customers, benefited from that. Oh, and one more thing is when I'm washing my car, you know, where I'm from originally, you know, when I was washing my car, I could have as much, almost as much water pressure as a fire hose. Are any of these projects going to help increase or make our water pressure a little bit better for doing stuff like that? Unfortunately, no, and the reason isn't because we don't understand what it would take to get that pressure. It's because there are so many older pipes in the system that if we were to raise the pressure of the system, particularly along areas like uh, Lake Drive, College uh, Avenue, there are uh, already homes that are pushing the 100-pound, 120-pound limit. You really should keep 80 at your house to keep from having potential prob problems with the plumbing. So. If we were to raise the pressure, like we could take the new tank on Elm Street and make it a higher tank, and you'd have more pressure in town until the pipes started breaking because the pressure was higher. Pipe systems like to equalize at a certain uh, pressure, and if you change that pressure up or down, it causes havoc on those pipes. So we really can't increase the pressure even though we'd like to because we'd have to have two different zones and two different distribution systems in order to make that happen. Well, Helms where he's got redundancy and the fire suppression and all that. It's total flow, that's correct, but it's not pressure. Yeah. Correct. <coughs> Does anybody have any other thoughts, ideas? So do we have a list of the second $3 million? We do. Let me, let me remind you, too, at our work session, we also talked about designating approximately $100,000 for work to expand our broadband gaps with Chantel. And we started talking to Chantel about plans for that. So we're still, I'll include that in the. Yeah, we're still kind of in our difference. We're, we're still pretty good shape there. Yep, we're still well within bandwidth on. It's likely you got your advice on anything else we could, should be looking at to spend some of this money? <laughs> Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. All right, so we'll put that up. We'll add that to the agenda tonight, Mr. Key, and, uh, and go ahead and take a vote on the, the, those three projects, and then just you embark. Just yes, y'all keep working so we can come up with it. Again, any assistance you provide is appreciated. No, uh, we're, I mean, you know, I'm glad we've got it to help. We've got to improve the system. Anything, like I said, anything we do is going to be move you further down the line to getting the system we need. Right. Helps our customers at the end of the day. That's right. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, all right. So, is there anything else we on our program that you think? Not anything. I should have any other questions. Uh, no, no. If not, we're going to take a break. Can you join the work session? Yeah, during the work session. And I'll call me next. Yeah, call yeah, me. Well, we're just in recess. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, break all that. Yeah, break. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think?